Good morning. It's good to see you all here, and we want to worship together as we are led in our worship time, but also to be together. And for those that are watching from Pleasant View, we welcome you as well. For those that are listening, welcome to you. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, and I had to think of the quote by Mark Twain that went something like this. Um, he was quoted as saying, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. And so the reports that were at convention this weekend was accurate at the time that it was written. And uh, we were in Shipshawana, Middlebury area, Goshen area, um, on Tuesday already. And I had meetings with the overseers and Friday afternoon after the regional meetings, uh, close to five o'clock, we decided we're gonna come home and be here yesterday and this morning. Um, we had already talked about doing that. So we're glad to be here with you. And convention was going very well. There were a lot of people there. Saw a lot of people I knew and friends and were able to connect for just a little bit during the times so we had the business meeting for the ministers in the morning, Friday morning, and then in the afternoon were what we call regional meetings. So we met with David Kaufman and John Graber from Faithview and Carl Good and Fred Brown from Potter's House and Marv and Elaine were there as well. Myself, um, Kerbin Martin from Leon Mennonite, uh, had, they had booked a, a trip vacation to Alaska before they realized that it was the same time and had already booked it, so they were not there. But um, we had a good time, a couple hours of sharing with each other, sharing pros and cons of what's going on in our churches, and very much um, felt good about that and being able to pray for each other then, and but also glad to be here this morning. So that's that's the reason that we are here. It's not, it, when it was put in the bulletin, it was put there with good faith that we would be there this weekend. Um, announcements of, why don't we have a word of prayer for the service? Father, we thank you for gathering us together. Thank you, God, for your, your plan for each one of our lives, your plans for this life, as well as the heavenly plans that you have for us in preparing a place for each one of us. I thank you for that. I praise you and give you honor and glory for the way that you have created this world and put us here for a purpose, for a reason, to contribute and also um, to spread your gospel, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in our workplaces, in the meetings that we have with people that we are privileged to meet, and we want to honor and glorify you this morning as well. So we ask that you would be honored in our service uh, from this, the time of announcement to sharing time to worship time uh, to Wendell's message that you've laid on his heart to Sunday school, uh, that you would be honored and glorified here as well as at convention. So we ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you look in your bulletins on the right-hand side, number two, it says the Ozark Boys Camp in Missouri fundraiser, supper and auction will be at Pathway this Friday, August the 2nd. August, did you hear August? What happened to July, right? It's still here, don't worry. Everything's under control. Supper starts at five, auctions at six. And then uh, to add to that, if you have donations that you want to give to that, you could um, submit those to Delmar Yoder by tomorrow. That way they can put them in the catalog that they're going to be handing out at the auction. Also, there's a boys camp presentation at Fairview August the 4th, which is a Sunday evening. I guess that would be next Sunday evening. Um, it's not in the bulletin, but just a reminder of the Victor Gingrich fundraisers, August the 16th at Hillcrest Academy, uh, formerly IMS, the meal and auction there. Does anyone else have any announcements that you would like to give?
Okay. We'll have Daryl come and lead us in our praise and worship. kind of, you're going to have to sing twice as loud. <clears throat> Last week, I sat down and wrote the names of all my children, and I remember those names, which there's, I have seven children. We have seven children. Then I thought, well, I'm going to try to write the names of our grandchildren. And I did well. I mean, I, I, I did well. And I got all the way to 14, but now if I rewrite the list this week, I'd have to add an extra one. So just kind of, um, we're excited about it. Our daughter, Rejoice, had her second little guy. His name is, I don't know where they get these names. I have no idea. But his name is Sutton, like Mutton, but Sutton. Sutton Shepherd, and, and that's her second little boy. So we're rejoicing with her. Rejoicing with her. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, we hope to see them sometime in August, because that's like next, next week, isn't it? on our trip to Oregon, so. Okay, let's start with, come now, it's the time to worship.
Number 164, for all the ages roll. Let's stand for this one. If you can, for the last two actually. You have enough strength. Yeah, 162 and this, 164. 164.
606. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <coughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Daryl. Appreciate that very, very much. Good. The offerings this morning are for the main offering is for Pleasant View. And the Sunday school offering today is for Ellie Headings. As I understand it, usually when we have an offering for her, it goes directly to her, where the mission offerings uh, go to Kingdom Channels to support her. So just keep that in mind. She's coming home, I believe, in three months, something like that. It's not too far away. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us the privilege to come alongside people that have a need for funds, for finances, for bringing your, the message of salvation to people, whether it's at Pleasant View with people that are being taken care of there. And we thank you for the facility and the, the staff there. And I thank you for each person that knows you and shares you with the residents. Thank you, God, for Ellie. Thank you for her time in Iraq and the impact that she has made on lives there. I pray that you would continue to guide her and bless her as our missionary of the month as well. And just uh, the things that she asked for prayer for, that we would remember her in our prayers on a daily basis. So we pray that you would bless this offering, that you would guide it and direct it to be used and honored and glorify you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. If you have, perhaps you have a visitor with you and you want to share with us who that is so we can all welcome you, that would be great. And if you have a word of uh, praise, something you'd like to share, this is called what we call sharing time. So. I know our numbers are down this morning, but it's all right. There's a lot of people at convention enjoying that time. So, Daryl. When, when you mentioned Nelly, I thought I'd share this. Uh, she is coming back. Um, I don't know the exact date, but I know the month. But she also did get engaged to a 
to a fellow named Brian. He's from South Carolina. I'm glad they did South Carolina because that just is on our way to Delaware. So when we travel, we can hit that. I, I was hoping it wasn't going to be like Southeast Texas or something, but so it's, it sounds like it sounds like a wedding's going to be next year. So just thank you for that. Okay. Actually, they met and they met on his travels. He's kind of a nomad, and they met back there in Iraq somewhere, and they come back to the states. So congratulations to Ellie and to. Brian, thank you. And if you put air in that one tire, well, right now, if you leave air out of that one right front tire, it'll kind of naturally take you down to South Carolina. So fine. All right, Esther Seeger. I am privileged to have company this weekend. Um, Sylvia Gaiman is a good friend from Denver, Pennsylvania. And Irene Brubaker is a cousin from Hershey, Pennsylvania. And we welcome you. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us. I see Webb and Clara May. They are not strangers to us, but welcome. Welcome to Iowa, the land of the tall corn, as it is right now. And decent looking beans, too. Yes, Mike, and then maybe Henry. No? OK. Thought I kind of saw your hand. I'd like you to pray this morning for Norman and Ruth Ann. Uh, ambulance came this morning and picked up Norman, took him to Washington Hospital, just feeling really weak. And that's all we know at this point. Okay. Let's pray for Norman and Ruth Ann. Ken, do you have anything to say about married life yet or anything? No? Okay. Great. Okay. That's, that's all we need to hear. One word. Perfect. And it doesn't matter if we've been married for 60 some years like Marlon and Nancy, we should all say it's great. Yes. You didn't have your hand up yet. Okay. But congratulations to Marlon and Nancy, by the way. July 30th, which would be, I believe, about Tuesday. It's your anniversary. Thank you. Welcome. You Thank accused you. me for raising my hand, so I guess I'll accept the okay. accusation. <laughs> <laughs> I was itching my eye. I was so blessed Wednesday evening and just, yeah, I just, uh, Bring a lot of memories back from the prison crusade, and uh, yeah, life is great. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And now, Kenya. Up here. Okay. Merlin does his own thing. Okay. Sorry. No problem. Yeah, I guess as I was just thinking there a little bit, um, I never did say thank you to all of you that showed up last weekend. Um, yeah, just thank you so much for showing your support and coming and welcoming us. Um, just all the gifts and the food, it's great. Uh, looking forward to plugging in here at the church and we should be around for, I think we're gonna be gone next weekend, but we'll be, we'll be here most Sundays, so um, yeah, just, a lot of new faces and people, kind of, so uh, bear with us as we get to know each one of you better, but. Yeah, thank you, Kenyon, and again, welcome to both of you, and so good to have you here. Looking forward to plugging you in. All right, Daryl. Yeah, I just, yeah, we welcome you too, Kenyon, and that's nice to have more young families in our fellowship here, it's a blessing. Just like to praise God for uh, his protecting hand over me, especially yesterday I was hooking up a trailer in front of my shop and somehow the, the truck wasn't completely in park and as soon as the, uh, the jack took, I undone the jack and it 
took some weight off of the block. It all, uh, in, it seemed like it took a long time, but it was in pretty fast descent into my shop door, and somehow I had the presence of mind of getting out of between the truck and the trailer. I don't remember doing that, but the truck jackknifed really hard, and if I would have been in there, I wouldn't be here. And then I had the presence of mind to try to jump into the truck and stop it, and a, a fast-moving vehicle going backwards is not a good idea to get under the door. <laughs> anyway, the truck ended up, the trailer was about 10 foot into my shop, underneath the garage door, pushing stuff around. It was a, quite a moving experience, and a, I'm not over it yet to realize how nearly I could have lost my life in such shenanigans, but anyway. Praise God that he watches out for those that don't watch out for themselves. Amen. Thank you, Daryl. Amen to that. I think back over my life, and I think of so many times when I was careless, not aware of what was going on. Not saying you were, but yes. Well, I was. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, over here, Sam. I just thought I could uh, get up and um, give a praise report as well. I, you know, I've been struggling with shooting myself. Well, I ended up doing that this past week, but only with a nail gun, not, not too bad. I did end up shooting myself in the hand and it did, uh, the nail went in and hit the bone, and I wasn't sure um, I was gonna have, well, we straight to the hospital, and um, they removed it, and it's pretty well healed over already. It's a couple days later, so yeah, it's, I only got to praise for how well this, it went with such an injury like it was, and, and it turning out very well, so praise the Lord. Thank you, Sam. We have a number of prayer requests this morning, uh, starting with Ellie, remembering her in prayer, and there's a number of things down through there. I wonder if I could have Daryl pray for your daughter, and also rejoice in her husband and their new son, Sutton, and also like to have a prayer for Norman. We don't know what's going on, but we know that God does. and. Anyone else and anything else that you can think of, I'd like to have stand for a time of prayer and then I will bring it to a close. Thank you, Father, again for bringing us together here. And I thank you for the prayer request. I thank you for the reminder to lift up Marvin prayer as he's very likely in the middle of his message. 
So I just pray for him that you would give him clarity of thought and speech and uh, that most of all you would be honored and glorified for how life has been in their family. I pray that you would bless their family there and the rest of our people that have gone to convention, that you would bless them and being able to, to learn, uh, to meet new friends, make new friends, and also to greet people that they've known before, that it would be a, a good reunion of people getting together to glorify you and to talk about family. I too pray for Norm and I pray for whatever the problem is with his weakness that you would just uh, sustain him, guide him, and direct him. I thank you for your overshadowing for both Daryl and Sam this past week, and I thank you for being a God that cares about us, the very uh, smallest detail of our lives, and what could be a very large detail. We thank you for taking care of those things. We recognize that that um, there are people that have lost loved ones, and um, just pray that you would guide and direct us as we, as we come alongside whoever we can, that we would guide and direct us. This morning as well, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Have Matthew Hostetler come and read our passage this morning. I will read be reading Genesis 20, chapter 20. I'll be reading out of the ESV as well. From there, Abraham journeyed toward the territory of Negab and lived between Kadesh and Shur. And he sojourned in Gerar, And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not approached her, so he said, Lord, will you kill an innocent people? Did he... He not himself say to me, she is my sister, and she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands, I have done this. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart, and it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet so that he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things, and the men were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What what have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you, that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, "What What did you see that you did this thing? And Abraham said, I did it because I thought, there is no fear of God at all in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is indeed my sister the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, this is the kindness you must do, do me. At every place to which we come, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants and gave them to Abraham and returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. To to Sarah, he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is a sign of your innocence in the eyes of all who are with you, and before everyone you are vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech and also healed his 
wife and female slaves, so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this passage of scripture. God, how interesting and how wonderful your sovereignty. Thank you for Wendell. I pray that you would guide him and direct him, his thoughts, the words that come out of his mouth, that you, God, by the power and the unction of you, God, the Holy Spirit, would lead him and direct this message for your own honor and your own glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is a joy Christ. The title of my message this morning is a question. And this question comes from Abraham's perspective. And we'll be preaching from Genesis 20, as I've been going through Genesis. Um, this is the next chapter we'll be looking at. So this question comes from Abraham's perspective. And the question is this. It's a question that you and I could ask ourselves, um, probably subconsciously, sometimes consciously, but it's kind of maybe in our heads and in our hearts. But the question is, how will I be okay? How will I be okay? I think Abraham thought about this as he prepared to go to a different place, a place that he had not been to Gera. In a way, for you and for me, we face things like this in our lives too. You know, as Norman had an ambulance ride this morning, a question that could go through our minds is, how will he be okay? Or like Sam said, as he had a nail in his hand, a question could be, how will I be okay? Or maybe it's just, I have a full week this week. How will I be okay? So I want us to know from this message that when we ask how we will be okay, that we can trust God so that we have true hope. Because the answer to that question of how will I be okay is simply only by trusting God. God is so much more than what I can imagine, what I can think up. His plans are so much greater than that. And we're going to see that in this passage today. You know, life is not transactional. It's not you put a dollar in and you get a Coke out. Well, sometimes you put 50 cents in and maybe a Mountain Dew comes out. Or you put $2 in and still nothing comes out. And then you have to put more in before anything comes out. Life it just isn't transactional. It's not predictable. We just don't know what will happen. Um, I'm not saying all of life is that way. But... The changes in life, we just don't exactly know everything. And how do we navigate those changes, the unpredictability of life? How will I be okay? So Genesis 20, verse 1, it says, Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, meaning like he left where he was, um, Picking up here in, in chapter 20, this is right after Sodom and Gomorrah. Abram just got done witnessing the smoke going up to heaven, to the sky, from Sodom and Gomorrah, seeing them destroyed. So he knew that ungodly people were destroyed. So that's kind of going through his head as he goes to Gera. So as he goes there, he tells Sarah, his wife, just say that you're my sister because I don't want them to kill me just because they want to have you. Maybe he's thinking, what if there's ungodly people there? They'd do anything to have my wife. And 
Maybe that was his plan of how will I be okay, is you know what, we'll put maybe just a little bit of a deception to what we tell people. It might be true, but it's also deceptive. And we could say, what if he had simply trusted God and would have went with honesty? But the story doesn't end there. And sure enough, in verse 2, as they went there, King Abimelech sent and took Sarah from Abraham. And then we have verse 3. It says, but God. And whenever you're reading a story or even something from our own lives and those words, but God, it drastically changes the direction of that story of our lives. It's when God steps in, the possibilities are endless of what he can do. Far beyond what we can even imagine. It says, but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said, you are but a dead man for you have taken another man's wife. What did that mean? Well, basically, for taking another man's wife, your punishment is death. And God wanted to make sure that Abimelech knew that. Then we have verse 4, Abimelech's response to that. It says, But Abimelech had not come near unto Sarah. And he said, Lord, will you kill a righteous nation? Will you kill me and also all of my descendants and bring us to ruin? Because she told me she was, my sis- she was his sister. She said it herself. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. That's Abimelech's cry back to God. He didn't come to God then with um, pride or haughtiness. He came to God then in humility, saying, God, I didn't know. Have mercy on me. And God again said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou art, that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. For I withheld thee from sinning against me. I think of my own life. And I know there's times when God withheld me from sinning from sinning against God. That's what God said here, from sinning against me. He's talking not just about sinning against Sarah or Abraham, but against God, because it would go against the character of God, his character of love, his law of love. And I thank God that he is a God that can do that. He can reach into any of our lives and do things for us, save us, protect us, keep us from doing things that would be a grievance to him. And verse 7, what God tells Abimelech to do. He says, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all. All that are thine. Now remember, he's a king, so he would have a lot of things. He says all of those things would die. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning. So this all took place in a dream. I don't know about you, but I probably wouldn't sleep much after I had this dream. And so it's no wonder that Abimelech rose early in the morning. I don't know what time that was. Maybe that's as soon as the sun came up. That could have been 4 o'clock. I don't know. And he calls his servants to him. 
and told all these things in their ears. And the men were sore afraid. They were very terrified. I mean, this is unheard of. You don't just hear of somebody having a dream and God speaking to them and what God told them to do and everything that just happened. And There was a lot that was happening here. And yet one thing Backing up to verse 7, we, re- we uh, learned something from this, two things about God. God is a God that works through people. He spoke to Abimelech and was going to work through him and bring in restoration, even though people are not perfect. God just works through people. It's just the way he likes to do it. And the second thing is that God is a restoring God. God was all about bringing restoration to Abraham and Sarah. And he wants to do it in a right and a good way. And that's true in each of our lives. God is a restoring God. He's always been about bringing us back to him, bringing us back into close relationship with him, a trusting relationship with him. It would seem to me that as the end of verse 8 indicates that his servants, Abimelech's servants, those men, that they were so afraid that maybe they, they didn't have the same kind of heart that Abimelech did. Abimelech really doesn't seem to be so afraid, but I wonder if that's because his heart was more engaged with God. It was trusting God. He was humble. Maybe those servants were fearful because they weren't as trusting in God and and his plan of working redemption in this situation. Keep in mind, though, they weren't necessarily a people that, they were Philistines. So they weren't supposed to be godly people, but yet they did have somewhat of a fear of God. Verse 9, And Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee, that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom great sin? You have done deeds unto me that should not be done. This ought not to be so. And very true, it should not be that way. I don't know if there was a little frustration in Abimelech's voice or not. He simply addressed the problem with Abraham. In verse 10, And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? Why did you do this? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Did Abram think to himself, how will I be okay? So he devised a plan that would make himself be okay instead of trusting God? Maybe. Maybe. You know, as we go about life, it can be easy to, whether it's a person, a situation, and think, well, It just is this way. And not to realize that, you know, God could step in at any moment and change that person. He could change this situation. He could work a miracle. We don't hold him back from doing that. He is able to do those things, and we can trust him. He is in control, and he does care. God is not limited. I wrote down two verses that I would like for us to read together. I think these two verses Abram could have read, and maybe he could have applied them to his life in that moment as he decided to use some deception. Thad, if you could put up 
Uh, Psalms 56.3 on the overhead. And it's a very short verse, but let's just read this together. It says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Each of us can do that. Just like Abram, he said he was afraid for his life. He could have said, you know what I'm going to do with this fear? I'm simply going to trust God. God, you have a way forward. And also Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. And together, let's read this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. These are words of truth for each of us to apply to our lives. When we face uncertainties in life, look to God, trust God. Several weeks ago, maybe a month or so, yeah, a month ago, after we got married and was settling into our house, I remember thinking to myself, as I'm going back to work and life felt busy or you know, trying to find a place for everything in the house and all of these things we need to do, um, you know, we need to change names and change addresses on a bank accounts and all these kinds of things. It's like, uh, how's this going to work out? Am I going to be okay? Well, I'm here today and I seem to be okay. And simply trusting God with things like that. We all face things like that. They kind of seem small looking back, but at the time they look like mountains. And simply trusting God, that's the answer to life. That's the answer to that question of how will I be okay. Verse 12, this is Abram speaking, And yet indeed she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife, so his half-sister. And it came to pass when, Abr when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness, which thou shalt show unto me every place whither we have come. Say of me, he is my brother. So this was the plan that Abram had concocted. Verse 14, And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and manservants and woman servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah his wife. What do we see here? God is using Abimelech to bless Abraham with these possessions, with these things. That's beyond Abram's wildest dreams, that he would go there and he would be blessed rather than killed. He was fearing for his life, but instead God wanted to bless him. And Abimelech said, Behold, my hand is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. Anywhere in King Abimelech's land could be where Abraham would live. He just had to go there and say, this is where I choose. That's a crazy blessing. I don't think Abraham saw that coming. And that can be in our lives too. God has blessings for us and things that we just don't know that they're coming. But as we trust God, he will lead us in those things. In verse 16, And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have, given, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. As I looked at different commentaries and different versions of this verse, it would appear that coming from the original Hebrew, it's like, well, how exactly is it translated? What exactly is meant by it? And so there is varying, um, maybe, interpretations. But I think that maybe Abraham, or, uh, Abimelech 
said this with maybe a little sarcasm in his voice as he said, I have given thy brother, since that's how, that's how they were introduced to Abimelech, when really it's her husband. But, but what's up with these pieces of silver and the covering of the eyes? Um, one idea could be that Abram was supposed to take the silver and buy a veil for his wife, and that would be a, a symbol showing that she is married, and so while they live there or wherever else they go, this wouldn't happen again, that Sarah would be taken thinking that she was not married. In verse 17, so Abram prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children, for the Lord had fast closed all up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abram's wife. There again, God brought restoration from what had taken place. God is an amazing God. He works and does things that we can't imagine. You know, I don't think as Abram went to this land, that this turned out anywhere close to the way that Abraham thought it might. We guess we don't read how he thought it might turn out, but I just don't think that this was it. Whatever we face in life, don't doubt the hand of God, what he can do. One of the differences of doubting God versus trusting God is surrender. We have to surrender our control as we trust God. In 2015, on our youth group mission trip to Costa Rica and Nicaragua, we had talked about it, like trusting God when, and just in knowing that he is in control, we don't know what's going to happen next, but we need to trust God. And so as we were in a bus, it was a bus that the mission had, and we were driving from Costa Rica to Nicaragua. Well, this bus had problems, and we had to stop along the way several times. I think the alternator wasn't working, and so the fuel pump would eventually run out of juice from the battery, and the bus would die. So then we had to figure out that problem, how to fix it. But being stopped along the way for hours at a time and not knowing where are we going to sleep tonight because we're not going to make it to our destination. What are we going to do? All these questions going through my mind. And I realized that I had such a peace in my heart. And that was such a blessing to me because with that, was simply knowing that God is in control and I can trust him. And therefore, I have peace. How will I be okay? Only by trusting God. So as you face life this next week, in a situation that comes up, and you might think to yourself, how will I be okay? Say, Father, I choose to trust you. Surrender to him and trust him. He is working for our good and for his glory. So I wanted us to know today that when we ask how we will be okay, we can trust God so that we have true hope. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word to us. We thank you for the life of Abraham, Sarah, Abimelech, we thank you for how you worked in their lives, bringing restoration, showing yourself strong. And God, I thank you that you work in each of our lives, in the little things and in the big things. You care about us, and we can trust you. And we want to place our trust in you. So go before us this week. Make your name great through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we turn it over to the superintendent, I think we have time. If you'd be able to
put the song up, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Why don't we sing that together yet? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to Sunday School Superintendent. I want to welcome each one to our Sunday School hour. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for the sermon that we just heard. We thank you for the chance to meet here together in peace and quiet with no fear. Be with us as we study our lessons and with our teachers as they lead us. These things do we ask in Jesus' worthy name. Amen. The uh, teachers and the children uh, may be dismissed for the basement. Our lesson today is is titled Glory and Affliction, and the focus is to willingly and humbly suffer for the cause of Christ and his life, that his life might be reflected in our lives. And uh, in a lot of ways, it goes pretty good with the sermon Wendell preached. Um, trusting God and such things. Um, But the idea of glory and affliction takes it to a little bit more of a 
higher level because a lot of times, you know, when we're going through something that's pretty bad or that's uh, something that we consider to be suffering, you know, um, we don't have any good reason to think it seems like while we're experiencing it that it could be glorious at all. You know, but I'm pretty sure Jesus didn't feel very glorious when he was in the garden at Gethsemane crying, you know, right before he was taken up to to Golgotha and nailed on the cross and all such things, you know, but we know how that story ended and we know that uh, the New Testament is full of promises from Jesus that um, we can overcome all the sufferings that we have because he overcame his sufferings. He said, um, he said uh, that, um, I'm not quoting it directly because I don't have it memorized, but you know, he said uh, that we're going to suffer in the world and we're going to be persecuted, but we don't have any reason to be afraid of what we experience in the world because he overcame the world. And so I'll just leave you with that. Uh, may God bless you as you study your lessons. Go now in peace.